Hello and welcome. I'm Elgusa Igumbo, and you're watching Energy and You, a weekly news magazine show that brings you developments in the energy space, especially Nigeria's oil and gas sector, with focus on Nigeria's national petroleum company, NNPC Limited. On the show today, NNPC Limited begins drilling of the first oil well in Nasarawa State. Plus, transition to cleaner energy dominates discussions at Sarah Week 2023 in the United States of America. And the Gambia looks to NNPC to develop its oil sector. I'm Erosa Igumbo, and this is Energy and You. Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching Energy and You. Well, let's kick off the show with some top stories making the rounds in the energy space. The presidential flag off of the sporting ceremony of the Ebony A Exploration Well took place in Nasarawa State today. The event, which took place at Obikiana, reaffirms the government's mandate to continually grow Nigeria's oil reserves. The Ebony A well will be the first in the north central zone of the country and is expected to bring lots of benefits to the state and the country at large. We'll be seeing some shakeup in the oil prices this week as French refineries strikes affect global oil sales. It is reported that half of the nation's April crude supply remains unsold as demand for crude and fuel production drops. Meanwhile, Putin's plans to station tactical nuclear weapons in Belarus also drew support from oil prices. Iraq's oil output and capacity may peak following growth of around 25% over the next five years. Analysts say this falls short of 2027 targets in hopes of ending a long-standing ambition to rival Saudi Arabia's oil output. With the discovery of oil in commercial quantity in Kolmani, a community in Gongola Basin between Bochi and Gombe State in 2019, the mandate to grow Nigeria's oil reserve continues. Today, the drilling of the oil well known as Ebenyi A in Obikiana, Nasarawa State, makes it the first in Nigeria's north central region. Here to tell us more is the former group general manager, Frontier Exploration Services at the NNPC Limited, Abdullahi. Oh my. All right, thank you very much, Chef, uh, for joining us on the program. Now, I think that a very good place to begin this conversation really would be the prospecting for oil in the northern region, which for many comes as a huge surprise. Tell us how this journey began. In the year 2008, this particular team that is conducting the exploration for oil and gas in the Frontier Basin was set up, put together. So, I will say, I have been part of this process since 2008. What we did at the beginning was to assemble all information as regards prospectivity for oil and gas in the frontier basin that has been acquired from all the sources we could lay our hands on. This information includes geological information as well as geophysical information. When we assembled this information, virtually what we did was to prepare a basin model for all the frontier basins of the country. But what I would like to tell you is that each basin is peculiar. Some have a lot of information, while some of the basins have too little information. All right. After putting all this information together, we ranked them. When we ranked them, some of the basins came up in terms of ranking. It's indeed very hard for me when we hear stories like this coming out of the north, first with coal money that has the capacity to add about 1 billion barrels of crude and of course 500 million cubic feet of gas to the natural reserves. And you know, now we have a A. That is just a small part of what we have seen. We have acquired so much data, we have acquired 1,828 square kilometers of 3D seismic data in the area. We have also the risk, the basin, 
we deploy technologies that basically see the presence of hydrocarbon, either oil or gas. So these technologies include stress field detection techno technologies. We have deployed surface geochemistry where different parameters were measured. Soil samples were taken and uh, they have good indication of hydrocarbon. That one billion is just the starting point. Wow. So that gave us a very good starting point. So we were able to design our work, our work programs excellently well to target the hydrocarbon, likely hydrocarbon bearing zones. Now, with what we have seen uh, with the oil drill in Nasarawa State, um, do you think that um, this exploration will be limited to Obi Kiana uh, alone, or is there any possibility of an expansion? As I mentioned, we have deployed technologies. These technologies include EFTG, Enhanced Full Tensor Gradiometry, for instance. We also deployed stress field detection technologies. We also have deployed you know, surface geochemistry, ground gravity, and ground magnetics. We have also deployed you know, micromagnetic analysis too. All these have seen all kinds of opportunities that are out there. As we sit like that, the EFTG alone has thrown out more than 10 prospects, excellent prospects. And uh, what I am telling you now is that the Ebenyi that is going to be drilled right. is just one of the moderate prospects. But there are others that are very big, okay. bigger than Ebenyi area. So if Ebenyi is successful, the rest are sure there are areas that are more than 10 that you know, are likely going to be successful as well. Now, when you talk about measuring success, I mean, one would have to cast his mind back, you know, to the many ups and downs that we've seen in the Niger Delta as a result of oil exploration and production. Um, what are the lessons that we've learned from this? And, you know, what is the government doing to forestall or prevent such a reoccurrence? Yes. The Niger Delta has been producing oil for the past 60 years, or there are about. With that, a lot of information has been gotten as regards what's happening there. And uh, all the risk in the Niger Delta has been evaluated. Virtually everything has been evaluated. So, NMPC top management, when they mandated us to move to this frontier basin to work, they told us categorically, please, don't reproduce Niger Delta again. Right. Now, when you look at Niger Delta, I think one of the major problems that we saw is the perhaps non-involvement of the host communities or perhaps less involvement of the host communities. I mean, how much of cooperation and support are you getting from the host communities on this project? And what's your level of involvement? I would like to tell you that all the traditional rulers in the area the Emir of Lafia, the Osana of Kiana, the you know, a traditional ruler of Obi, and all the areas we have worked, we have acquired seismic data there, they gave us maximum cooperation. Right. They even advise us on the type of security for us to use to ensure. And since we started operation, from the time we did geological field work, to the time we acquired surface geochemistry, surface gravity, and uh, surface magnetic data to acquisition of 2D seismic, acquisition of 3D seismic, and location preparation, access road, we have not recorded one incident hmm. of community development. Well, thank you very much. Uh, this is all the time we have on the show. I'm going to have to say thank you at this point for joining me on the program. Well, I've been speaking with Abdullahi Bumai, the former Group General Manager for Frontier Exploration Services at the NNPC Limited. 
And to all the stories now are the 41st Sera Week Conference in Houston, Texas, a gathering of top global energy executives and leading members of the industrial, automotive, manufacturing and technology communities. The future of global energy top discussions. With gas gradually being accepted as transition fuel, the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited was at the forefront of these discussions to attract investments into Nigeria's transition energy infrastructure. At the gathering of industry leaders, policymakers, experts and innovators from around the world, NNPC's mission was clear, an aggressive pursuit of investment in gas as Africa's chosen transition fuel to renewable energies. Until the advent of shell gas. We were sending LNG volumes into Lake Charles and Altamira in the US. And of course, we are also the first country to drop molecules of LNG into Portugal in Europe. So clearly, Africa has been contributing to the well-being and the prosperity of the world. And that came from investment in oil and gas by the national oil companies working in partnerships with international oil companies. That is the key to responsible production of fossil fuel, especially gas. And so it is important that we invest side by side in gas development as well as renewables until such a time that the world is comfortable, that the renewable is enough to significantly backstop the required energy requirement of the world. It is at that time that we can decelerate investments in fossil fuel, and in particular gas. On a panel session titled, Strategies of National Oil Companies in a Changing World, the head of the Nigerian Upstream Investment Management Services, a subsidiary of NNPC Limited, extrayed the decarbonization efforts of NNPC Limited as a national oil company towards delivering energy in a sustainable manner and meeting global climate goals. The staircase one for us is to be able to change the narrative around what we are producing. We've been producing oil and everybody wanted oil before, but we know what oil is coming with, a lot of carbon, and we need to switch it over. And we have something that you can switch that is cheaper, that is more clean and more reliable. And, and that energy, for me, is gas. Mm. And that is our bridge fuel to the future. And that bridge to the future is what will take us to what I call destination fuel, which is gas. Yeah. Now, how do we deliver that gas? We have anchored three strategies. Number one, we want to use it for electrification. And then I will tell you what we'll do after electrifications. But we also want to use it for chemicals, <laughs> to produce brown chemical, what I call brown hydrogen carrier, ammonia, methanol. And ultimately, we'll continue to export as we have been doing in terms of LNG. The Chief Upstream Investment Officer added that NNPC Limited aligns with the global effort to build a hydrogen-based economy by evolving from grey hydrogen vectors to a green hydrogen-fueled world. He noted that at the moment, Nigeria is able to attain a level of clean hydrogen space with 123 tons of emission being generated. That's what we call the 5R strategy. And under the 5R strategy, uh, we are first reducing emission. And principal source of that emission is gas flaring. We are cleaning the players across and we are taking them and monetizing them. So that's one way. The second way is that we are replacing fuel. Um, we have a lot of um, upgrade diesel generators. We are converting this diesel generator to gas. That way, we are removing high carbon intensive liquid fuel to gas fuel. We are also renewing. We are renewing our equipment and infrastructures that we have uh, from traditional, all archaic, un inefficient uh, equipment to new ones that use less power use gas and several other things. We are replanting as well. We are going to restore our forests. We are restoring to make sure that we uh, address the issue of afforestation. And lastly, like I said earlier, and that will lead to where we talk about the carbon question. 
The 41st Sarah Week afforded other countries of the world an opportunity to present their energy transition journey. While the theme borders on the future of energy, the echo for other nations of the world to recognize that the energy transition journey should reflect energy sufficiency aspirations of other developing nations reverberated. We'll take a quick break now and when we come back, we'll find out what Nigerians understand as renewable energy. You don't want to miss this. Do stay with us. What do we do at NNPC? Since inception as the National Oil Company of Nigeria, our mandate has been to serve the nation by meeting the energy needs of over 200 million people. Over the years, we have invested in tomorrow's leaders and contributed to the development of communities across the nation. We have grown a network of over 500 service stations. We are the driving force behind the constantly growing Nigerian economy. With an efficient distribution network servicing all parts of the country, we ensure the highest quality standards in our crude refining processes. Nigeria boasts of immense oil and gas reserves which we explore in commercial quantities, providing endless opportunities for economic development. As we drilled for oil, we discovered vast amounts of gas, up to 200 trillion scope. By harnessing gas, we have reduced gas flaring and invested in liquefaction plants, shipping gas across the globe. Our energy footprint is remarkable. We supply gas to the domestic market for power generation, reaching all across Nigeria. Powering everything, anywhere, and everywhere. NNPC, energy for today, energy for tomorrow. Oh, energy for tomorrow. Thank you very much for staying with us. If you're just joining us, you're watching Energy and You. I'm Egusa Igumbo. Renewable energy is defined as natural sources of energy that are replenished faster than they are consumed. We find them in sunlight, wind, water, organic matter, and more. We stepped out to find out what Nigerians really think renewable energy is. Renewable energy is an organic form of energy that does not deplete. It means that it does not cause harm to our immediate environment and it can be transformed from one thing to the other. For example, you have the solar energy, you have the wind energy. Energy is something that can renew the old method of technology that we have been using. So we can be improving our technology like solar, infata and all those stuff. A renewable energy is something that you can get from the sun. Anything renewal, even heat. Um, is a kind of energy that is not depleted. That the kind of energy you generate through natural resources. I think, for example, I think the most popular currently is sunlight. It's something that can be renewed. People generate power from the air, like uh, what what the, what's it called? This um, solar energy. It's generated from the sun. Some of them get their light from the sun. When they get the energy there, they use it in the night. Before the day goes down, it's off. They put it at the sun again to renew the energy. It's something that uh, awakens a dying process. It's something that uh, gives ability to, to awaken sources or source. We're not talking about alternative use of energy. Energy like fossil fuel, uh, solar energy for generation of electricity, and so on and so forth. I hope I'm correct. Renewable energy to me are, are energies that are being gotten from natural sources such as plants, sunlight, and etc. And those energies are energies that can be reused and they don't diminish. Now with a population of over 1 billion, 600 million Africans are reported to lack access to energy and its effort to change this narrative 
The government of the Gambia, through the Gambian National Petroleum Corporation, has signed an agreement with the Nigerian National Petroleum Company to develop the Gambia's oil and gas sector. In the face of global energy transition, Africa appears to be sticking to its position on energy justice with the continuous development of its abundant hydrocarbon resources. The Gambia, a small West African country with a population of 2.64 million, recently took a practical step towards developing its oil and gas sector with the support of the Nigerian National Petroleum Company. Giving a background to the development, the Group Chief Executive Officer of NNPC, Mele Kiari, explained that teams from both countries had met in the past to discuss modalities for cooperation and have reached a formal agreement on the way forward. We met uh, uh, at least twice in uh, engaging to see how NMPC will collaborate with the Gambia National Oil Company uh, in areas of exploration, uh, production and trading, and particularly to, to support the Gambia National Oil Company as just coming up new and we have extensive experience that we can put on the table to support this company uh, in line with uh, uh, two countries' uh, known relationship of a cordial and mutually supportive relationship. And uh, as follow up to that, a number of conversations has taken place between officials of the Gambia National Oil Company and our, our, our people here. Uh, they have reached a point where we can now see a framework for that support and to sign up that uh, support so that, uh, framework so that you know, we can now have a very formal and continuous process of engagement as we continue to also learn from each other. I'm very sure that uh, we have many things also to learn from, from the Gambia National Oil Company. The small West African country with a projected GDP of $2.2 billion by the end of 2023 depends on imported petroleum products, especially heavy fuel oils for electricity generation. It discovered crude oil in commercial quantity in 2004 and has four offshore and two onshore oil blocks, which it is eager to develop to boost its economy. The MOU was signed by the Executive Vice President of Business Services, Mr. Inua Danladi, on behalf of NNPC Limited and the Managing Director of the Gambia National Petroleum Corporation, Mr. Babukar Njai. With this memorandum of understanding, we'll be able to um, enhance capacities within GNPC, improve on our upstream activities, that's our ENP, and uh, as well as strengthen our supply chain because we are in their need of supplies and uh, for petroleum product supplies. And uh, at some point last year, we were on the brinks of an economic catastrophe and uh, we certainly wouldn't want a repeat of that scenario and that's why we are here and I believe with this partnership we'll be able to get the coaching and support necessary from NNPC. The MOU represents a practical step by the Gambia to tap into Nigeria's pool of skills and experience to jumpstart its oil and gas industry. There's a saying in Gambia that if somebody goes into a dark room before you, he's the one or she is the one who's going to show you where to sit because he or she will have acclimatized with the environment and will tell you where to sit. But if you just jump in and want to go in, probably you will hit, you, you hit your head uh, on the wall. So this um, uh, example is basically explaining to um, both parties that um, we really need your, need your support to guide us, um, to show us the way, and to leapfrog some of the challenges we've gone through um, so that we don't have to go uh, through those challenges. With the support and guidance from Nigeria, the Gambia is on its way to achieving energy sufficiency. Now, the competitiveness of hydrocarbon resources on the African continent when compared to renewals in terms of investments, availability, affordability and sustainability in the downstream sector was brought to the fore at the Africa Refiners and Distribution Association Week 2023. The ADA conference and exhibition gathering held in Cape Town, South Africa, and gave NNPC Limited another opportunity to re-emphasize how energy transition and energy security for the African nation can be balanced. Well, here are picture highlights from that conference.
But that's all on energy and you. I'm Erosa Igumbo. Join us again next week for another interesting episode. Thank you for watching and goodbye.